Discover Help presents Stress-Free Living with Ray Savage and Mr. Stress-Free, Ratanjit S. Sandhi. This audio program is an unscripted and unrehearsed conversation between Ray and Ratanjit. It is shared with you in hope of adding value to your life. We encourage you to listen to this program in its entirety to receive the full impact of its message. Sit back, relax, open your heart, mind, and soul to this edition of Stress-Free Living. And we'd like to welcome everybody to Stress-Free Living. Thank you so much for joining us today. Ray Samich with you as my first um, enjoyable task of this morning is to introduce all of you to my dear colleague, co-host, and wonderful friend, Ratanjit Sandi. Ratanjit, how are you today? Wonderful, Ray. How are you? I'm great, thank you. And invigorated because we haven't been live here for a couple of weeks. And when we are live, it's um, <clears throat> not only spontaneous conversation that you and I have, but also the opportunity to see some wonderful people from all over the world that join us on our Zoom call and to know that we have listeners both live here today at this moment in time, but also that are following up and listening to the recordings, watching the recordings of this in so many different ways. Uh, technology today is so incredibly uh well, just miraculous in terms of how we can reach people. And we're so grateful for that. And let you know, let everybody know that you can listen live here in Cleveland on the AM and FM radio. You can listen to the stream at wintradio.com. And you can also, and that works on smartphones, works on uh, any kind of laptops and other types of computer devices on your home speakers, your smart speakers. And then mostly uh, you can also catch us on our YouTube channel, Stress-Free Living Radio. Ratanjit, uh, we, are, we are living in a crazy world right now, filled with stress, and people are watching the events of the world take place, not only in the United States, but wherever they may be, especially our, our hearts go out to all of the people right now that are afflicted with the war in Europe. Um, and, and it just... It's a difficult time for us to to really kind of cope on a day to day basis and and stay happy and upbeat when we know that there is so much uh, difficulty and challenges and pain and heartache uh, in this world today, causing us stress. So to go a little deeper, to say what's in our hearts and what's in our brains. And you use you came up with a term this week for the show that said, "Are we brain full and mind less?" And I was intrigued by that title, and definitely want to talk about that, especially how it relates to our stress, how it relates to our coping with the world that we live in today. But let's start with a real simple question, Ratanji. Isn't the brain the same as the mind? When, when you say you could be brain full and mindless, that seems to be contradictory. I thought the brain is the mind. Well, brain is the organ. And mind is the software which runs the, that organ. It's like a computer is the hard hardware and the software runs the computer. So all your thoughts and all your uh, feelings and all your ac actions. So this is all generated by your mind and brain implements it. Hmm. So that is the fundamental difference. But so when we talk about our mental capacity, our, our intellectual abilities, and that's, we've done many shows on the different types of intelligence. It's not just purely number intelligence or speaking or your knowledge of education, you can have all different types of intelligences in so many different fields. But when you do talk about that intelligence factor, that's, is that stored in the brain? Is that considered to be the brain's capacity? See, the brain's capacity can be enhanced. It is known if you do complex problems of mathematics and things like that, the brain, the muscle of the brain, which 
uh, memory which keeps this information uh, is grown and and that gives you higher data available to you so obviously your knowledge gets enhanced your decision gets more polished all that based on the data gathered within this organ brain hmm. and so that's how we can enhance our, our intelligence. But it all comes via our mind. It is through the mind, mind, the thought process, which starts, see, mind is, is like energy. And it generates energy through thinking, feeling, and choosing. And it is, it is really our aliveness. It is without mind, the body is dead. Brain can be there in a dead body, but mind is missing. Mind is connected to our being alive. And, and the physical brain our body without mind is useless. So that's the fundamental difference. So, you know, go ahead. I, I just, I just want to connect the dots on that to, to people because um, it's, it's worth thinking about. We are all pretty much using our technology today. Uh, people of all ages use computers and laptops and smartphones and all of those things. So I think we can relate to this today probably better than ever before in that we know that that computer has incredible capabilities. Looking at a laptop as I'm doing at this moment, there, there's just incredible power within that laptop. But it's basically worthless if you don't know how to use the, the software that can access all of that capacity, all of that ability. And so, you know, it, it, it's, it's a great analogy to say that our brain has incredible potential, not only as it already is, as you pointed out, but the ability that we can to even make it stronger, make it bigger, make it work even better. And yet, if we don't know how to do it with the software, if we don't know how to develop it, then we are wasting it just like wasting a, it could be a million dollar computer with the capacity, but it's sitting there worthless if you don't know how to use the software. And, and basically you're telling me that's the same way that we all can operate with our brain, right? If we don't know how to, how to use our mind to be able to access the ability of the brain, then we've, we've lived a, 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 almost a worthless life relative to using our brain capacity. Yes. Yeah. So that's, that's pretty, it's a pretty um, powerful statement. It's also a pretty, in a way it's scary because it's like, gee, what could we be doing if we really did use our brain to capacity? We probably could be accomplishing a lot more in life. See, to relate in physical terms, when we generate this mind energy through thinking, feeling, and choosing, we build thoughts, which are physical structure in our brain made of protein. And this building of thoughts creates structures, structure changes in our brain which, which is called in technical terms, neuroplasticity. So it is, it, it is like in our software, when we work through the software, it guides the data and the things of the creative things we create, they are actually physically, electronically present in your computer. Similarly, in our brain, these pro protein molecules, they, by movements of theirs, they, they collect that data. But those data all are generated through beginning with the thought process or feelings. And then we choose what those feelings and thought process are. And that con constructs a structural 
physical structure in our brain made out of protein. See, that, that, I think I would guess that most of our listeners would, would be surprised at that as I am, because we think of thoughts as kind of an intangible, something, you know, I have an idea, I have a, I have a thought, I have even something I learned. We think of that as something that you really can't consider a molecule. You can't consider that a tangible substance. We, we think of these as you know, a momentary idea. I mean, it's kind of proven by that because I think of something and then an hour later, I forgot what I was thinking about. So it's like, it, it doesn't have any structure to it, but you're telling me that they, that actually these are protein molecules. So, I mean, these are tangible structural things. When we think of something in our, in our mind or, or utilize it through our mind, it actually becomes something to hold on to. Yeah, that's why the memory is there. We remember those things, what happened mm. to us, our feelings and all that. So it's like when you have created a, a, a newsletter or something on your computer, it comes from your mind into the computer thought process, but when it is written, it's there forever. Right. But it even is there forever when it's only in our brain, is what you're telling yeah. me. Yes. Yeah, so that's that's... I, I guess it makes sense. You're right. When you say the memory, it makes sense because how, if it didn't exist, how could you go back to it? But still, I think of these things as fleeting, fleeting thoughts and ideas that don't actually have a physical structure to them. That's fascinating. So th that's so, why those thought processes, if they are erroneous or contaminated or, and they will build protein molecules, which are there, and they are going to start to dictate our actions in future. So, so when you say we're brain full, I mean, we're, we're all brain full, right? So brain, I mean, we, that, that, that is what all the data which is contaminated with our uh, thought process and feelings and choosing gets collected in, in the protein molecules. So that is why our, our brain is full of those things. Hmm. But if we are not thinking originally, if our mind is not uh, equipped with the truth, the mind is not understanding the reality, it is parked in pseudo reality, it is going to create wrong molecules in the brain. So brain is going to be full, but the mind is empty without the truth. So you are mindless in absence of the truth. So See, if, if the right uh, thought process is generated in the mind based on the truth, all our thought processes are generated by pseudo truth. Somebody has told me that this is going to happen tomorrow. So your mind is thinking, oh my God, he's scared. And so it generates wrong molecules in the brain. And as a consequence of those wrong molecules, we produce the body starts to produce hormones which harm the body and we are going to experience stress, frustrations, depressions, all those things happen. And that is done by the brain, but the brain is contaminated by the wrong thought process, by mind. All right, so you, you've just raised the bar on this conversation to the next level because so far, we've been isolating the distinction between the brain and the mind, but, but now you have correctly announced that when things happen in the brain, since the brain controls all of the, most of the functions of our whole body, yes. whether voluntarily or involuntarily, that when the wrong data gets communicated there and gets processed through there, that it's sending signals out to the rest of the body that perhaps are based on, on bad data. And so in the process, we're, we're getting stressed, we're getting tensed up, we're, we're getting, you know, our, our blood flow is affected, our breathing is affected, our, our uh, organ health is affected because of what's being processed in the brain. And a lot of that may absolutely be inaccurate and, and in, 
insufficient in terms of making the decisions that it should be making. So, you know, when, when we talk about stress-free living at the core of the show, we could see how this bad data in the mind and the brain is really impacting the overall health of our, of our human body um, because of this. this. This is, you know, I think we've done this show for 20 some years and I don't think we've ever touched on this topic before. This is, um, this is really something core. We should have talked about this when we were young. <laughs> <laughs> maybe we would have uh, changed. I would have changed my life, maybe, if I would have realized what's going on there. As long as your mind thinks you are young, you are young. Remember. Okay, good. Then I'm that I'm still I'm still young yet. Okay, my brain still says I am. All right. So so Rataji, let's let's break this down a little bit further. Okay, because we now have a better clarification of what what the brain is and what the mind does to run it. But brain full, it, our brain is basically full of something, right? I mean, everything that we happen, everything that happens to us in our life gets into that brain. Good knowledge, bad knowledge, good decisions, bad ones, good thoughts, bad thoughts. It, it all becomes proteins that are part of the brain. So we all have a full brain. Some of us have a brain that is um, filled with good things. And, and some of us have a brain that perhaps is filled with not so good things. But we all are pretty much brain full, aren't we? Yes. Okay. So, so it, it, I mean, the mind, I think you're talking two things then. I mean, I think we're talking about filling the brain with the right stuff. But then we're also talk, talking about how to use the software properly that drives whatever is in the brain. So, I mean, we have two, two obligations here to be the best we can be. One is to, you know, whether you call it the truth, you know, fill the truth in the brain. And then once it's there, what do we do with it? How do we utilize the mind to most effectively use what's in the brain? See, there is another issue which has to be addressed. <clears throat> because the way our brain is designed by nature, it has a unique structure and to make our life more efficient, what its brain does is anything, any thought or any uh, process we repeat consecutively, it memorizes. And then later on, it parks in a part of the brain called basal ganglia. So this part controls the habit. So those repeated thing which we do becomes habit. So it doesn't use the normal thinking part of the brain. We begin to do those things without thinking and rely on this habit and stop incorporating the process of new idea, new data. So that is another problem. So when what happens is to change that structure of the habit, which is controlled by this basal ganglia, we have to replace it by another habit. And this habit can be created by doing something consecutively for 40, 50 times at the same time in the same way. So then we can replace those habits. So one thing we have to realize, we are not what our new ideas come in our brain or new thought process, which we learn. We like to copy that new idea, new thought process, but we are really become our habits. We are not our knowledge, we are our habits. That is what has this brain done to us. Brain is an amazing capacity to store things. It is there to help make our life easier. But at the same time, I, supposing I have a wonderful storage I can store things and they will be there. But if I store garbage, 
then it is going to smell. It is going to be awful. So what happens is that initially our mind is not given the right truth or right screening process through which we generate the proper thought, proper feeling, and proper choosing. And as a consequence, we create this structure of protein molecule, which holds on to this erroneous data, which eventually begin to control our life. You know, the, the whole idea of the habit, when we talk about it, how we were created and the amazing abilities of our human body that were given to us by whatever power we say created us, the idea of a habit is so incredibly brilliant because it puts a lot of our regular processes on autopilot. So you can see why we develop habits or why that concept was there because, you know, breathing is a habit. I mean, if we had to think about breathing constantly all the time, I mean, that would, that would take a lot of our energy, but we don't have to think about breathing. We don't have to think about doing so many things that we do by habit. And so that frees the brain then and the mind to be able to do creative things, right? To be able to figure out problem solving and, and create new ideas and, and new abilities to do wonderful things because we're not bogged down. But the problem is that we do develop all these bad habits. We do all these wrong things, what, you know, whether they're eating the wrong foods or going to the wrong places or, or you know, sleeping too much or sleeping too little or whatever it is that we get into these habits. And then it, it seems to me that we become lazy with those habits. We, we not maybe intentionally, but because we have so many habits, many of which are bad, we let those run our lives. And we're busy, but we're busy doing all these things habitually. And we don't take the time to be the creative people, solve problem solving people that we were intended to be because the habits were there. Is that, does that make sense? Yes, yes. See yeah. The, so, so, so the, the habits are, the habit idea is good. It's just that we have the wrong ones. Yes. It's, it's, it's a amazing tool gifted to us, but it is used wrong. It's like a sharp knife in the hands of a surgeon can save life, but a sharp knife in the hands of a robber can kill people. Mm -hmm. so the same thing. Mm -hmm. I think you, you, uh, we need to take a break, don't we? No, we, we're actually going to keep going here um, for a little bit longer. Okay. So, so help me to understand, Ratanji. We, we've come up so many different new ideas here today. This is, I'm really enjoying this. I hope our audience is as well. But I'm a little bit uh, uncertain of where to go with this thought process from here. Do we want to talk about our putting the right stuff in our brain? Do we want to talk about developing the use of our mind? Do we want to talk about improving our habits and replacing our habits? What, what and, and how does this relate to stress? What, what, for the second half of our show today, what are we going to try to accomplish that will help us to, to add the highest value and avoid the stress? In our, what's, what's the best plan? Well, see, if we understand the working of mind and brain, we can generate independently of what is happening in the world, a, a feeling of uh, happiness within ourselves, feeling of stress-free living within ourselves. This, imagine if this was your habit, then you are unaffected by environment around you. Of course, difficulties are going to come our way, challenges are going to come our way, but we begin to think of those things in a totally different light. Once we realize that uh, once our mind 
is operating by a software based on truth, not on pseudo truth or, or given truth or, or truth based on our insecurity, fear, greed, and all, all our things which we are afraid of. If we are living in fear and all our habits and all our thinking, all our feelings are controlled, are going to be controlled by in our mind with that. And as a consequence, we are going to contaminate this brain with wrong data. All right. It is time for us to take a break. And Ratanji, when we come back, we will come back to that foundational point. I think that's where we do need to start. I, I laid out all the different things that we could talk about. Let's go back to that very core thought of saying, what's going to give us the best ability to use the brain, use the mind, build the right habits, and then we can build from there. This is Stress-Free Living. Ray Samich, Ratanjit Sandy with you. So glad that you're with us. Please stay with us. We'll be back in just a moment. All right, everybody, uh, now's a good time. We've got a few seconds. If anybody would like to comment on what you've heard, especially relative to where you want us to go uh, following this break, any questions you want me to ask? Steve, I'm gonna get to what we talked about, trust me. Anybody have anything for us? Uh oh, we put them to sleep, Rataji. <laughs> They're all sleeping. What to say? All right. I think either that means we're on the right path or that we're totally off. <laughs> no, you are on the right path. No question. Oh, thank you, sir. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> all right. Jacob, do you. Uh, are you listening, Jacob? No, he's not. He must have an issue there because he was, that's why I didn't go to break. He was away from his seat. Jake, can you hear us? Must have a technical issue there today. I don't know what it is. But I think we're going to have to go to a break again in about 15 minutes. Okay. All right. I guess we're on our own. That's a G. That's good. <laughs> it's fascinating. I, we we've never talked about this distinction. I don't think not not like this. So Ray, yes. So uh, it's all well and good, in the, and and uh, I understand some, not all of the biological thing. So with all that's in mind, because as you suggested at the end, this is about stress-free living. Yep. Uh, it goes back to my question. So it's all well and good to philosophically talk about it, but the reality is whether you have stress yep. with your kids or your family, we're, we're or, coming, you watch, we're or you watch the news. And we are back on stress-free living, having our conversations with our wonderful Zoom guests. And unfortunately, I apologize to those that we had to cut off here to come back and do the show. But Ratanjit, uh, their comments uh, during our break is that this is interesting and fascinating uh, to understand how this works, uh, the way it does, how our bodies work. But let's get back to the show. And, and that is what we want to do, because as I started at the top of the show, we're living in some tough times and it's very easy to be stressed out. Uh, we're stressed out from everything we've gone through with the pandemic and how that changed our lives. And now we're stressed out with what's coming in the economy of the world and, and how the impact, the fallout is going to affect our lives, our jobs, our homes, our families. And then now we've got a war in, in part of the world that is threatening to even get broader and larger and bring more people into that. And, and potentially, I mean, there are some people that have mentioned as catastrophic as World War III. So there's a lot of stress right now that is on our brains for those reasons and many others as well. How does this connect knowing what you have just shared with us? knowing about the brain, knowing about the mind, knowing about our habits, how 
how can we cope and be less stress in our lives knowing this information, especially under the dire circumstances that we live in every day? What's your recommendation? Well, see, we have to understand how we got here, why the world is parked in very selfish, what is in it for me mode. Everyone is all thinking of me. We live in a society, it's like in a human body, Ray. <clears throat> we have all these organs. We have your lungs, you have your uh, heart, your kidneys, your liver, <clears throat> and all these organs are working without any personal agenda. They are not saying that what is in it for me. They are producing what they are supposed to do. Supposing we give them this brain <clears throat> or a thinking power, and they will first, first that brain does is it creates a feeling of me being separate from everyone else because I can think freely. I'm me. So once that feeling comes in your liver, your kidney, your heart, your heart is going to say, gosh, I am pumping nonstop, 24 hours. And these other organs, they, they, they are not working. Some of them are not working 24 hours. Your, your leg is only going forward when you are walking. You, so I'm going to take rest or I'm going to go, I'm, I'm going to give less blood to kidney. I'm going to give less blood to your brain. And what happens? You have enormous sickness, you die. So what has happened to us in our life is because of our brain, we have not understood the reality of oneness. We are part in separateness and all our thinking, all our feeling, all our choosing is based on my being independent, individual, what is in it for me. And as a consequence of that, you are now becoming power hungry. You are ego, part, part in ego. And as a consequence, you become insecure. And as a, as a result, you have stress, boredom, and, and fear, greed, all that as a part of it. Once the truth of oneness is given to the mind, that mind is an energy, mind is basically energy. It is part of the bigger one energy, universal energy, and it is not a separate entity, although it is running a separate computer, a brain. Your human body is separate. But what is running this human body, the mind, is part of the universal energy. Because in the beginning, I said, mind is basically energy. And this energy enlivens this human body. It brings life in this human body. And this human body has brain and all these organs, protein and everything, all these uh, hormones which are released by your human body. So if the mind, that energy, which has a thinking capacity, does not comprehend the truth of oneness, no matter how much technology we develop, no much how much science and studies we do, how much intelligence we have, 
we will not make the right decisions. We'll, our thought process is going to be all parked in insecurity. What is in it for me? Fear, greed. And as a consequence, we'll compromise all our society. And, and, and as a consequence of that, you have this world, third world war at our doorstep. So building on the analogy with the computers, a lot of the software today, the best software is out there on a cloud and we access it. So we have our brain in our own, on our own body, or we have our, our hardware in our own computer. And then we tie into this cloud-based software. That's okay. So the analogy is perfect because this cloud-based software is what is the oneness. It's the universal oneness that we all need to have operating our computer or have operating our brain. So that all, that all fits beautifully. What I still don't understand is how, how that software can help us re remove the stress. Okay. How, how do we, you know, we're, we're in, we can't control what people are doing in Russia and the Ukraine. We can't control what decisions are being made in Washington, DC. We are only limited to what we can process in our mind and our brain. And we feel at times, I think, so helpless and, and so insignificant relative to the world around us and, and the decisions that are being made in the world and, and the results of those decisions that other people are making. So how do we put that in perspective, Ratanjit? How, how do we take what we can control, which seems to be so little, and allow that to put us in the right frame of mind and heart and soul to cope with that? And also, secondly, to make a difference in what we can do? Well, see, it's, it's a very uh, uh, good question. It's, question for all of us, but you have to realize what I'm going to say is going to go into our contaminated brains and may not fully make sense to everyone. And what I'm saying is, again, coming back to mind is the whole thing this human body is run by. Without mind, when mind, when we die, mind disappears. Brain is there, all the organs are there, but mind is missing. So mind is that energy. And so in reality, Ray, if you understood this statement that I am not the human body, I am the brain running this human body, which is temporarily given to me to operate my functions on this earth. So it's like, I'm not the computer, I'm the software. And, and I can create everything from there. See, in all these comparisons, we are comparing software and computers to brain and, and mind. Any comparison between the two things cannot be exact comparison because they are two right. entities. Yeah. So, so now mind, once we realize that I am the mind, I am the energy, I'm part of the universal energy, and so is everyone else. So first of all, my fear disappears, my insecurity disappears because I am not subjected to all the suffering and pain experienced by this human body, which I control or I run. I am the one, this brain, which is not affected, um, and the mind, which is not affected by insecurity or all the problems of the world. So once you realize that, then suddenly you feel, you begin to feel secure. You begin to feel that 
you begin to think in terms of solving these problems, which are appearing through misunderstanding of me being the human body, me not being the mind. So once you understood, your own peace and contentment comes in you. And as a consequence, you become a catalyst to spread that thought process and knowledge, whoever you come across. So your mission of life changes. And as a consequence, your whole thought process, your whole thinking becomes stress-free, greed-free, fear-free. And now when we make this statement and when we uh, give it to our brain to digest, remember brain is contaminated is not going to fully comprehend what we are saying. If we only operate first, make sure we control our mind and through a process, we begin to understand the working of the brain, then only we are going to be able to take control on ourselves. All right, so let, let me think, let me see if I understand what you're, what you're sharing with us. The, the brain, when we think of ourselves as a brain, now we're thinking of the human capabilities and the human limitations of who we are. When we, when we think about that term, we know that we are going to die at some point. Everybody does. So that brain is not going we to... Are, we are not going to die, but our human body is going to die. The human body, right. So we, we know that our human body is going to die because that happens to every single man or woman that has ever lived on earth. They At some point, they die. The, the body dies. And that brain at that point is done too because the brain is part of the human body. So if we operate and solely look at ourselves as a human being with a brain then part of us is always going to have that awareness and part of us is always going to feel some insecurity, some level of insecurity because nobody wants to have their human body die. Nobody, well, most people in the right frame of mind, there's a few exceptions, but the great majority of us want to live and we want our body to live. And so we have insecurity, we have worries, we have stress, at the very core based on that knowledge. What I think you're suggesting is that if we look at it from saying, no, we're more like the mind. We're more, we're not that brain. We're not that human brain and the human body. We are that, that energy that we can refer to here as the mind, or maybe in other shows we refer to it as the soul or, or some of our oneness being. And if we think and put it from the perspective of that, then that really does change the perspective on everything else, because now we're not limited to 50 years or 80 years or 100 years or 10 years in, in some sad cases. We're, we're limited, we're unlimited because that first and foremost insecurity about our human body longevity is out the window. We don't have to worry about that. We are, we are a spiritual being having a human experience. And so from our perspective, that eliminates the biggest insecurity that we could have. Is that, am I phrasing what you have said right? Yeah, absolutely. See, okay. When you learn to manage your mind, you can make feelings of depression, stress, anger, anxiety work for you instead of against you. Okay, so so once we've established that, if we're if we're on the same page in terms of what that means, how does that still? Okay, so we're not insecure about our about our longevity but we're still facing these same feelings of 
of worry about the world, uh, of, of the anxiety of things that are happening that we don't want to happen, of the impact on our, and even if we know our children are, are, are part of the you know, spiritual forever experience, they're, they're still going to be faced by these problems potentially of economics and politics and, and everything else. I mean, I, I still don't get the, the jump that says that that makes everything okay. It, it's still, we're still living in a, in a very difficult, challenging time. You see, see, our paradigm of being as a human body, when we think myself as a human body, then I have children, I have relatives, they're all connected. Once I think of me as the energy, universal energy, then I see that energy present in everyone else. I do not then look at them as my children, my spouse, my friends, they are all the same status. So even the strangers are at the same status as my so-called loved ones. It is the understanding of the truth of oneness, which gives me a clear understanding that everyone is energy. And if you want to go further, even every molecule of the human body is energy. So the human body is also made of energy. But what runs this human body is that power, universal power, which is all single power present in all of us, part of the single power present in all of us. So once we realize that ownership disappears, Ray, my losses disappear, you begin to accept how world is given to you because your only purpose is to serve that situation. And you don't judge that situation or wrong or right. You simply figure out how to add the highest value under those circumstances. Even on the most difficult time, whether somebody in your family is hurt or sick or dying. So you are basically there to, under the circumstances, add the highest value because that is only way to serve that universal power through the universal power present in you. So are, are you saying that our, our passion for that mission will, will, will allow us to eliminate the concerns? I mean, if that's driving us then, if, if the positive energy towards making a positive difference and adding high value that will drive us, that passion will allow us not to be worried and not to have the stress in our life? Because I just don't see how the stress, it's, it's, you know. It's, it's just like the doctor. A very sick patient come to the doctor or the per person has uh, gone through an accident and the whole body is bleeding, parts are broken and all that. So instead of worrying about that person or instead of judging or feeling the loss or gain, doctor gets engaged in fixing that, making that whatever knowledge and medicine or equipment is at his, at his or her disposal, they make that person better. So their whole focus, focus is not on their, that's why, the stress and anger and anxiety experienced by the doctor is only, only utilized towards making the patient better. So we are really playing the role of that doctor, not knowing, not having a MBBS degree or MD, but no matter what circumstances we are placed under, we are going to accept those circumstances as they are given to us 
broken ribs or broken legs or whatever it is. And we are going to see whatever at our disposal to help fix that situation. So that is our only purpose or only uh, uh, ability which we possess. On the other side, when I'm worried about, I'm, I'm so saddened about, I'm, I'm sitting there and helpless. And that, that side of that is all coming through the body mode, which is not coming through the universal energy mode because universal man energy has enormous healing power. It has enormous creativity. It can generate situations which have never done before. You can solve those problems which have never been solved before if we are completely parked in the universal energy mode. But this all makes sense. It, it, it all, it, it's, it's great. And the analogy of the, of the emergency room doctor that is faced with a, you know, an incredible scene in front of him or her to be able to put all that aside and just say, okay, I need to fix this. And so they, they, they don't get caught up in the emotions of, of who and how and what and why and, and how devastating and everything else, they just go right to fix it. So that's beautiful analogy. But if that person that came in on that stretcher was their son, Okay, that doctor now suddenly feels something there. Now there is another level of emotion that gets involved. And there's love, you know, that word love that suddenly comes into play that says, I love this person that is on the stretcher that has gone through this terrible situation. And, and, and now it's more important than ever that I fix them. And, and but my brain keeps going to how this happened and why this happened and how could this happen and all those other kind of factors because of that, that human emotion in there. So I, I add that to that example because that's the way I think we feel about, you know, to that strength of emotion to what's happening in our world, our, our fear for those we love, our, our, our concern about how this could be happening and, and what could be happening and things like that. So where does that come into play? How, how can we separate something so important to our, to our human experience, our human journey is love and separate that from, you know, from our, our spiritual responsibilities? There are two things. Generally, when your own loved one comes, you are not able to play a, a real doctor anymore. So right. normally you will allow other doctors to attend and fix your son. But imagine if you were the only person there, there was no other choice, but you, you are the only doctor there. Then you have to detach yourself from the emotion of my son and convert your mind, let your mind uh, allow you to remain in the full doctor mode and treat this human body as a physical body, not as your son, to be able to fix that situation. And another side of this coin is in life, Ray, as I mentioned, all our relationship are relationship created by the human body, my blood relative, my uh, so, but they are not related to your brain or, or, or your mind. Your mind has direct connection to that universal energy. So mind does not see another person as your son or daughter or spouse or anyone they see universal energy in them. So your purity comes in you, your uncontaminated, unselfish service takes over in that oneness mode. Not that you will sacrifice anything in your extending the service 
to that person, but you would enhance it because now you are serving the universal energy present in your son or your daughter or a stranger. So your level of care would be enhanced to the nth degree, whether you are serving your son or daughter or you are serving a stranger. Imagine what that world would be where you do not distinguish between serving a stranger or your loved one. So we will have uncontaminated, unbiased, uncorrupt society. That's a good place to leave, Ratanjit. We need to go. And I appreciate uh, all of the incredible new thoughts that uh, came through you today and, and into this conversation. I look forward to a part two of this because I, I, I think we've made a good dent in it, but I think that we need to continue this thought about our mind and our brain and, and our habits and, and all these other aspects that you brought up today. Thank you so much for being with us and sharing all of that. Thanks to all of our wonderful listeners. Thank you so much, everybody. We appreciate you being with us and we will talk with you again very soon. Remember, we're all playing the same game.